Today's video looks at a development that could reshape naval power dynamics in East Asia. New satellite images and leaked photos that point to China's next aircraft carrier, the Type 004, possibly being nuclear powered. This comes just days after China officially commissioned its third and most advanced carrier, the Fujian. The timing, the satellite visuals and the unusual structural features seen at the Dalian shipyard have all triggered speculation that Beijing is entering a new phase in its naval modernization, one that edges the People's Liberation Army Navy closer to the supercarrier class traditionally dominated by the United States. In this video, we'll break down what is known so far, why analysts think the Type 004 may run on nuclear propulsion, how this fits Beijing's broader naval ambitions and what this shift could mean for the future of power projection across the Indo-Pacific. The foundation of this discussion is a set of newly circulated satellite images and ground-level photographs showing work underway at the Dalian shipyard in Liaoning province, the war zone, a US-based military analysis platform examined the images earlier this week and pointed to one particular structural feature on the hull under construction. A large enclosed block that resembles the reactor containment section found on American nuclear-powered carriers. According to their assessment, the size, placement and overall layout of this block showed strong similarities to the reactor modules on US Nimitz-class and Ford-class carriers. Analysts noted that while the hull is still incomplete, the structural arrangement suggested planning for a propulsion system that differs significantly from the conventional engine configuration seen on China's previous carriers. The idea that China might be preparing its first nuclear-powered carrier isn't entirely new. State broadcaster CCTV recently featured a naval scholar who stated that future Chinese carriers could adopt nuclear propulsion as part of long-term modernization goals. His comments, made shortly after the Fujian was commissioned, were widely interpreted as a sign that policymakers view nuclear carriers as an inevitable next step. Nuclear propulsion provides major operational advantages. Traditional carriers, like China's first two, the Liaoning and Shandong, rely on steam turbines and diesel generators, which means they must refuel relatively often, usually every several thousand nautical miles. Nuclear-powered carriers, by contrast, can operate for years without refueling, giving them unmatched endurance, higher sustained speeds, and the ability to support far-flung missions without logistical limitations. Those capabilities align with China's evolving strategic goals. Over the last 15 years, the People's Liberation Army Navy has shifted from a largely regional coastal defense force to a blue water navy capable of long-range deployments. This transformation reflects Beijing's ambitions to secure sea lanes, expand its global presence, and counter the influence of other major naval powers, especially the United States. The commissioning of the Fujian was already a major milestone. It is China's first carrier equipped with electromagnetic catapults instead of the older ski jump design, putting it technologically closer to the US Ford class. Introducing a nuclear-powered carrier as the next step would represent a move toward parity in expeditionary capabilities, allowing Chinese vessels to remain at sea indefinitely while supporting large air wings and sustained operations. The timing of the leaked images is significant. They arrived just one week after the Fujian was put into service, signaling rapid consecutive progress in carrier development. The Fujian itself took roughly five years from construction to commissioning, and the launch was celebrated domestically as a symbol of China's growing technological confidence. Observers now believe China is accelerating its naval timeline, possibly aiming to close the gap with US carrier capabilities more quickly than previously assumed. The images from Dalian show early stage construction, essentially a partial hull with distinct outlines of internal compartments. But the presence of what looks like a nuclear containment module is what has drawn international attention. 
While some analysts caution that this structure could hypothetically belong to a test platform or a non-propulsion related module, the consensus among defense watchers is leaning toward a nuclear configuration. Historically, nuclear propulsion has been associated with nations seeking long-term blue water reach. Only a handful of countries operate nuclear carriers, the United States, and for a period, France before it scaled back its nuclear carrier program to just one vessel, the Charles de Gaulle. If China introduces the Type 004 as a nuclear-powered supercarrier, it would join an extremely exclusive club with strategic implications far beyond technological bragging rights. Nuclear carriers can sustain high operational tempos, launching sorties at greater rates due to larger onboard power generation. They also enable a carrier strike group to travel at consistently higher speeds, allowing rapid movement across large oceanic areas. For China, this would mean the ability to maintain a persistent carrier presence in the Western Pacific, the Indian Ocean, and possibly the far reaches of the Middle East or Africa without requiring docking for fuel. At the same time, the leap to nuclear propulsion also signals a deepening investment in China's domestic shipbuilding capabilities. The Dalian shipyard has long been a central hub for constructing major naval assets, including earlier carriers, and the shift toward a nuclear-powered design would suggest that Chinese engineers are increasingly confident in reactor miniaturization, safety protocols, and long-term sustainment logistics. Developing a naval reactor is far more complex than creating a civilian one as it requires compact systems capable of delivering significant power while withstanding battlefield conditions. If the structural block on the Type 004 truly indicates a reactor compartment, it implies that China has either completed or is close to completing a reactor prototype optimized for naval use. That in itself is a landmark milestone in military technology. It is also important to consider how this fits into the broader region's strategic environment. The Indo-Pacific is already experiencing heightened tensions around maritime influence, particularly in the South China Sea, Taiwan Strait and Western Pacific. Naval power is a core element in these geopolitical contests. The presence of a Chinese nuclear carrier could shift regional calculations, especially for nations like Japan, India, Australia and South Korea all of whom are closely monitoring developments in the balance of naval capabilities. For the United States, which currently operates 11 nuclear-powered carriers, the emergence of a Chinese counterpart would not pose immediate parity, but would represent a narrowing gap in long-term capability trajectories. With China also expanding its submarine fleet and amphibious ships, the Type 004 would enhance the plan's ability to operate far from home ports in multi-theater environments. The exact timeline for the Type 004 remains uncertain. The leaked images show a hull that is still under assembly, with only early components visible. If China follows a similar schedule to the Fujian, which took around four years before launch and additional time before sea trials, the Type 004 might not enter service until the early 2030s, Yet the strategic signals are already clear. Beijing sees nuclear propulsion as the next logical step in its naval evolution. As these developments unfold, countries across the region and beyond will be watching closely, evaluating what a nuclear-powered Chinese carrier means for naval balance, maritime security, and the future of power projection in the Indo-Pacific. Whether the Type 004 becomes a fully nuclear supercarrier or a hybrid test platform, its emergence marks a new chapter in China's maritime ambitions, one that will influence strategic planning for years to come.